then in 1982 as it does now in 2021. So, you know, it hasn't changed nothing. Everybody's right? still the same. That was laid on my heart because I accepted the Lord in 1982. And he laid it on my heart because the preacher told me I might be the only Jesus and anybody would see and I looked up like it was nuts because when I quit school or left school they were still saying the Lord's Prayer in there and I was informed it was kicked out in 1962 20 years prior to that that laid it really heavy on me like what? and that was kind of the start of what's going on in this country <laughs> you know you can't have much to learn well God my name is Big Jim Nolan and I appreciate you all being here love you all Pastor Frankie. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to have him back. You don't have to, you don't get to hear from me a little bit. <laughs> I'm scared of you. Yeah. No. Uh, I'll give the announcements because Bobby seen him run off and hit the corner from us. He's up there in Nashville. You know, Nashville, Cats, he's up there doing all that stuff. You know, so he's, his family's up there. And uh, the announcements are pretty easy. Y'all know, you know, Saturday night, 6 30, right here, you know, every week, rain or shine. Even though it's a biker church, we come here in the rain. You just, you know, we just, we're here. Saturday night, that's now. Now, Sundays, we got an outreach program. On the second Sunday of every month, we're at Ross Myers, the Harvard dealership. And uh, we've got a tent set up where we give out Bibles. We didn't this past Sunday because we had a uh, problem. This went that way. So we, we didn't make it up there. But, uh, you know, tomorrow we're at the uh, Iron Horse. In case you didn't know, that's the third Sunday. We're there every month. The fourth Sunday, we got the old Bobby's World Famous Pancake Breakfast. That's right here. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's a breakfast. It's that's pretty good stuff. Yeah. And uh, then we go for a ride. You know, and that's that's what we've got on the, the churchy thing. Then we've got a Bible study on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. It's really good. It really is. You need to come. You know, I've learned a whole lot, and I've been doing a Bible study every day for 30 some years, and I still learned a whole bunch. But it's really, it's really good. Now, the first Thursday of the month is kind of open house. We all come here and kind of chew the fat and carry on and stuff like that. Second, third, fourth, and if there's a fifth, whatever else, then we have the Bible study. And everybody's welcome to come. Yeah. Now, I know Bobby's elaborated a lot on some of these things. I think that covers just about everything we got going. You know? And uh, I think, really, because I've taken, I think, enough time singing this stuff. If, uh, if everybody's still hanging around later, maybe I'll do another song, but I think it's time to hear, hear from our pastor, because we really haven't heard a whole lot from Frankie lately. I've missed it. All right? All right. Play his music or whatever. <laughs> no, I don't think I have any intro music. I can hear some music, but I don't know exactly what's going to do. <laughs> Well, good evening, everybody. Well, thank you. Thank you. I missed you guys, too. So, um, welcome to Redemption Community Biker Church. I'm excited that you guys are all here tonight. We're going to have some fun tonight. We're going to learn some stuff, too. Uh, we're happy you're here. And uh, let's go ahead and open in prayer like we always do. Father God, we praise you. 
I thank you that we're here tonight, Lord, and that we're going to worship together. We're going to learn what you have us to learn. I just pray tonight that you would come down and be amongst us. Touch our hearts. Help us to leave here different than when we came in. We love and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's good to see Willie and his wife here tonight. Yeah. Good to see all you guys here, but, you know, it's good to see Willie walking out on his feet and, and uh, active. Um, so you've probably been wondering where I've been the past couple of weeks. And uh, I'm just going to lay it out there. I'm just going to be very transparent about what's been going on. Uh, about a month ago, my wife and kids decided that they were going to leave. Um, and for the last four weeks, I've been trying to um, figure that out and trying to reconcile, and it's not going to happen. Um, we were married. We are married 23 years. Uh, it was a shock to me. Uh, something I was not expecting. I'm not going to say anything negative um, at all, just that uh, God has given me peace about this. He's given me um, some new things to learn, and he's blessing me. So as much as it's a difficult time, it's also a time of learning. And so I just want to be transparent with you guys. Uh, you know, I, I love you guys, and I'm going to continue to teach. I'm going to continue to be here, and I know that God has a place for me here, and that's what we're going to do, and we'll see what happens. Amen? Amen. I can assure you uh, that I haven't abused my family. Uh, some people might think, you know, there's a reason. I haven't been unfaithful. Uh, there's nothing I've done that I believe warrants what's occurred, uh, but it is what it is. So we move on. So it's time for some jokes. <laughs> what do y'all think? I only got one tonight, but I think it's pretty good. All right, so it's been a few weeks since I've done this, so I'm going to try. Jack is a cowboy. And he's working on a large ranch in a remote pasture in Wyoming. You guys ever been to Wyoming? Absolutely beautiful. One day, as he's overseeing his livestock, a brand new 7 Series BMW suddenly advances toward him, creating an enormous cloud of dust behind it. The car stops, and the driver is in a young, he's a young man in an Italian suit. He steps out, he's got Gucci shoes on him, Got his ray bands on. He walks over to the cowboy and says, if I tell you exactly how many cows and calves you have in your herd, will you give me a calf? Jack looks at the man, who's obviously a yuppie, and he thinks to himself, you know what, why not? And he looks at his peacefully grazing animals and responds calmly, let's do it. The yuppie then whips out a very impressive iPhone 11. He begins to surf the NASA website. Simultaneously, he uses the GPS satellite to triangulate his exact coordinates. He feeds that back into the Google Earth app and captures a high resolution image of the exact location they're in. The young man then opens the digital image in Photoshop he, export, he exports it to an image processing facility in Langley, Virginia. And within seconds, he receives an email to confirm the image has been processed. The data captured and has been stored, right? So he accesses a SQL database, and after a few minutes, he gets a response. He looks at the email and he says, sir, you have exactly 1,586 animals in your herd. Jack says, that's right. I guess you can have one of my cats. He then watches with amusement as the young man struggles to get the animal into the trunk of his car. <laughs> After a minute or two, Jack says to the guy, hey, if I can tell you exactly what your business is, will you give me my cat back? The young man thinks for a second and says, absolutely. 
He said, you're a congressman with the U.S. government. Jack says, I think you're a congressman. Wow, you're exactly right, says the yuppie. How did you guess that? He said, no guessing required, son. You showed up here even nobody called you. You weren't paying for an answer I already know to a question I never asked. You used millions of dollars worth of equipment to try to show me how smart you were, and you don't know a thing about how ordinary working people make a living, or for cows, for that matter. If you did, you'd know that this herd of cows is actually a flock of sheep. <laughs> now, with that said, give me back my dog. <laughs> What do you think? Is that good? All right. That was pity applause. I know the difference. I know the difference. All right. So let's get going with our lesson. Over the past few weeks that I've been out, I've been cleaning up my house. Okay. I've been repairing everything in my house. And uh, it's kept me busy. It's kept my mind occupied. And it's, I've gotten a lot done. Um, and I've literally thrown out over 25 bags of garbage. I am not joking. Over 25 bags, okay? And that doesn't include the stuff I gave to Goodwill. That's just garbage, all right? And I figured out that the garbage men probably know when somebody moves out because of the mountains of garbage that they see out on the curb. I'm positive. They're like, okay. These people are moving, right? And you know, I'm very thankful that I have trash pickup twice a week in my neighborhood, Mondays and Thursdays. Everybody else? Yeah. Other trash pickup? Good. All right. Trash pickup is a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Okay? You know, I never realized just how convenient trash pickup was until I lived in a house that didn't have trash pickup. I used to live in the Catskill Mountains of upstate New York. And we didn't have, and somebody else? Yeah. Amen. Um, and you know what? We didn't have trash pickup. Now, I want you to get a full understanding of the story. This is where I lived. That's the exact lake I lived on, not a joke, okay? Um, I have to explain a little bit about the area. I wasn't kidding when I said I lived in the Catskills. It was in the Catskills. It was absolutely stunning, especially during the fall, okay? I lived in a 2,200 square foot house on five acres of beautiful country. I had a two car garage with a separate barn and lots of gorgeous landscaping. There was a large deck on the back and uh, I had put a hot tub out there, all right? It was an ideal picture of what country living was supposed to be and what everybody thinks they want. A quiet house in the country. But I'm gonna tell you what, you don't want it, okay? Listen to me very carefully. You don't want it, all right? Because it's a lot of work, a lot, all right? I honestly had no clue what I was getting into when I bought that house. It would take me most of my Saturday just to do the yard work, okay? Oh, and when it snowed, forget about it. I had to spend hours shoveling pathways, getting the snow off the cars, raking snow off the eaves of the house so you don't form ice dams, which then damage the roof. It was never ending, and it snowed a lot, a lot, okay? One winter, it's a true story. One winter, the Weather Channel was broadcasting from the middle of our town. That should tell you how much it snowed. Okay? What's that guy's name that, that shows up in the storms? That guy. He was there! He was there! And I'm like, man, it's the end of the world. Okay? But this was one of the homes in town during the winter. I mean, it was, it was insane. Six months of winter. No exaggeration. Okay? It was beautiful. But it was horrible, okay? Now, I heated part of the house with a wood stove. So before every winter, I had to stock firewood. Anybody done that? It's not a lot of fun, okay? And if you've ever done that, you know how much work goes into it. But I was willing to put up 
with the work I had to do when I lived there because it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. But if that wasn't enough work, I had to take the trash to the dump every week myself. And to tell you that it was a pain in the neck is a very big understatement, okay? I actually had pain in my neck from carrying the bags of garbage. Anybody ever have to do that? Take garbage to the dump? Yeah. You may not think it's a big deal, okay? Ah, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's not a big deal one time. But when it's 15 minutes away, you tend to put it off as long as you can. It's a half hour trip to take out the garbage, okay? I remember there was one time that I was sick, I forget why, um, and, and the trash piled high, right? And uh, I think I had the flu and then I was working 12 hour shifts and so I couldn't get to it. And uh, a buddy of mine actually took the garbage to the dump for me. That is a friend, amen? And, uh, and I thought to myself, if I can get more people to do this, I'm kidding. Um, but the reason I'm telling you all this is because I want you to realize just how nice it is to just drag garbage out to the curb and leave it there. It's a beautiful thing, okay? It's a luxury that we take for granted. You really don't know how big of a deal it is until you don't have it anymore. Okay? Now, it's a beautiful thing. I mean it. It's a beautiful thing. You know, I, I drag mattresses out there. Mattresses. And they take it. I drag furniture. They take it. It's awesome. Okay? Um, I won't ever take it for granted again. Okay? I come home. It's gone. It's beautiful. Anyway. So, you're probably wondering why I'm talking about garbage so much. Well, because I'm pretty bored. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, so you'll be happy to know that I haven't completely lost my marbles. Well, completely, but mostly. There's a purpose why I'm telling you this. I think we can all agree that we generate a lot of garbage in our households. Anybody? Yep. Garbage? Okay, good. Paper, leftover food, old magazines, glass bottles, Amazon boxes, anybody? Amazon boxes? I can move with the Amazon boxes I get, okay? And that's just the physical garbage. That's just the physical garbage. Anger, greed, impatience, lust, idolatry. If we're honest with ourselves and we're willing to admit it, we make a lot of that garbage too, don't we? What do y'all think? Most people who attend our church have heard me say the following verses, have heard me read them. Probably more than a few times, but I'm going to read them again tonight for our lesson. Galatians 5, verses 19 through 21 says, When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, Jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. And that's just Holly Hill. <laughs> Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Folks, this is this world. And whether we like it or not, we produce some of this garbage too. We play in stuff we shouldn't be playing in. Amen? And listen, if we are living naturally, not allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, then this is what we get. We get this garbage. Because that is what the natural person wants. Okay? Apart from God, these are the things we follow after. And if you don't believe me, just look at the internet for five minutes, okay? Aside from physical garbage, human beings produce a ton of what we're talking about tonight. And maybe it would be tolerable if we only shared this kind of garbage with people we don't know. But here's the truth of it. It's not. Many of us 
give our best behaviors to the people we don't even know. We, are, we give our best behavior to people we don't know. And then we wait until we get home before we produce most of this other garbage, right? We drag it in with us. Hey, glad you're home, right? It's crazy when you think about it. Sometimes we act the best towards people we don't know and give the worst of ourselves to the people we say we love the most. Isn't that amazing? Hi, how are you today? You're at Walmart, right? No, nobody goes to Walmart. We're at Publix, right? Good evening. How are you tonight? Right? Then you go home. What are you doing here? Right? We give the worst behavior to the people we love. It's backwards. I think most people can think of a time when this has been true in their lives. And listen, if that was all the garbage we had to live with, maybe that might be tolerable too, but it's not. You see, we have the physical garbage that we create. We have the natural harming, emotional and spiritual garbage that we bring into our homes because of our sin. But we have other types of garbage that we allow in our homes. Did you know that? We turn on the television and invite all kinds of new garbage into our homes. Garbage. Think about it. We are entertained by stories of murder and greed and lust and killing and love, right? That's what we're entertained by. We invite ideas and beliefs into our homes that are completely against the teachings of Scripture. And we wonder why we're miserable, right? You guys with me? Yeah. But it's entertaining. No, it's not. It's crap. It's a bunch of crap. Okay, let me give you a story. I didn't plan on telling this, but I like it. All right, so teenage boys go to their father. Their father doesn't let them watch radar movies. Teenage boys go to the father and say, Dad, we want to watch this movie. It's a new one. It's an awesome movie. It's rated R. But listen, it's got the best actors. It's got the best director. Brad Pitt's in it. I mean, it's amazing. We want to see this movie. There's a little bit of nudity, but it's not bad, right? Father says, let me think about it. Next day, boys come down. Father's in the living room. Got a plate of brownies in front of him. Okay? Boys say, Dad, can I have a brownie? He says, well, before you eat them, let me tell you something. I made these brownies with the best chocolate. I made these brownies with my own hands with love. They're the best brownies ever made. There's a little bit of dog crap in them. Just a little bit. Okay? And if you eat these brownies, I'm going to let you go to that movie. Both boys turn around and walk upstairs. You get me? Just a little bit of that stuff changes the whole thing, doesn't it? And we don't even realize that we can handle it, right? No, we can't, folks. It changes our minds. You know, I used to read true crime novels. I was telling Bible study this the other night. I used to read true crime novels, right? All the time. Like, I used to read two, three a month. And before you know it, I'm thinking everybody's John Wayne Gacy. <laughs> you know? I'm like, he's got a bug. That's Ted Bundy. Right? You're Ted Bundy, brother. I'm sorry. You know? Because you, you start to see similarities. It changes the way you look at things. It warps your thinking. All right? So we have to be cognizant of that. And if that weren't enough, we turn on the news and allow the garbage coming out of the speakers of the television to, fear us with, to fill us with fear and doubt. The news is horrible. Just about every story of the news is written to fill us with fear. It's so that we'll be afraid and it never stops. You know why? Because fear sells. Fear sells. Fear compels us to action. And if you don't believe me, next time you see a hurricane coming, go to Publix and look for some bread. I dare you. All right? You can't even find hot dog buns. All right? Fear compels us to action. I better go get some toilet paper. Right? Fear makes us buy things. It makes us vote a certain way. It gets us off our couches and involved in a cause. Make no mistake about it, folks. That's what they're trying to do. 
The whole point of these salacious news stories, I said that word, that's right, is to get you off your couch and do something and buy something, okay? And if that weren't enough, we get the internet to help us too, all right? Brings more garbage into the house. Not only do we have to contend with what we naturally bring into our homes, but we turn on the TV and we log on the internet and we're filled full of so much more garbage than we ever even thought. Now don't misunderstand me. There's good stuff on TV. There's good stuff on the internet. But if we're being honest, most of the content that we view is not good for us. It's not positive, the majority of it. Most of the shows, TV stories, movies, websites, they don't bring anything of value to our lives. For real. The last month I haven't even turned on the TV and I'm better for it. All right? Did you know that 30% of all content transferred across the internet is pornography? 30%. That's crazy to think about. According to the research I found, 60% of the data is file sharing. Okay, just normal file sharing. Things like Dropbox, Google Drive, Microsoft, OneDrive, anything else like the cloud, all that stuff. That's 60%. Okay, the other 10% is video streaming. Facebook, Google, YouTube, okay? Think about that. There's three times more porn than what's on Facebook, Google, and other types of video sharing combined. Three times. It's a lot of porn, okay? I also did a little research about news stories. Listen to these statistics. According to Quora, approximately 90% of all media is negative, 90%. The media itself takes advantage of what's called the bad news bias, the bad news bias, because we're more interested in bad news, right? We are. Did you hear about this? Ooh, we're more interested in bad news, right? This practice of bad news bias does more harm than good. In fact, the majority, 95% of the headlines have been reported as being blown out of proportion to manipulate the reader's emotions. What? I never knew. They want us to do something. They want us to buy something. That's all there is to it. According to The Guardian, sensational stories from 90% of media headlines, mass shootings, airplane crashes, serial killers, asteroids heading to Earth, they go on and on. 95% of these stories are sensational news, okay? Studies show that headlines with bad news catch 30% more attention than regular news stories. I didn't make this up. According to Time Magazine, one in every 10 adults Checks the news every hour. You want to talk about bringing stress in your life, man? You know what? I feel pretty good. It's the news say. Oh! Right? I mean, we're just inviting anxiety into our lives. Did you? Oh! I gotta get to the store. I gotta buy bread. Right? I gotta buy a bottle of water. There's an asteroid coming towards Earth. The New York Times published an article stating that 87% of all COVID-19 coverage in 2020 was negative. 87%, even though there was positive stuff to report. At a time when people needed to hear something positive, the US media chose to focus on the negative garbage because it sells. Negative media bias. Got us all by masks, right? Couldn't find uh, Clorox wipes to save your life, right? It's incredible what we'll do. Some of you are probably wondering why I'm giving you all the negative information about these statistics. Well, for two reasons. First, I want to show you how we carry the natural and emotional garbage we have into our homes. We bring this stuff in. Then we turn on the TV, and we turn on the internet, and we bring more in, okay? When we have a bad day, or we're tired, or we're hungry, God forbid, it compounds everything, doesn't it? 
Anybody been hangry? Right? Don't even think about it. Don't talk to me. Give me a biscuit. Right? It compounds it. Secondly, we invite more garbage into our homes of what we consume on television. Social media and other sites on the internet. That's a lot of garbage. That's a lot of garbage. And here's the kicker. We can choose what we do with our garbage. When it comes to physical garbage, we take it to the curb so somebody else can take it away, right? Because if we don't, it starts to pile up and stink, right? It brings flies and maggots and sickness into our homes if we don't get rid of the garbage. But here's what we don't realize. The other garbage is worse than the physical garbage. Because we let it pile up everywhere. We let it sit there and we watch it and we pick at the garbage. All right? And we choose to live with it. Not only that, if things weren't bar, ba, bad enough, ba, 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 bad enough, we voluntarily go out and bring more garbage into our homes. Hey, did you hear about the Kardashians? No, and I don't care. Right? Listen to this. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. 5, 19 through 22. Don't stifle the Holy Spirit. When you know the Holy Spirit's working in you, and you know you shouldn't be doing something, don't do it. Don't scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Listen to what they're telling you. Are they trying to manipulate you? Read the, if you're going to read a new story, read it for what's real. And you know what? By the way, when I was in the military, I know for a fact that the news stories lie. Because I was, I was on CNN. That's my claim to fame. I was on CNN. I was in the United Arab Emirates on the C-17 Globemaster III. Okay? And you know what? We were there because we broke. Our engine broke and we had to stay there for a week and wait for parts to get there. And you know what CNN said? Military aircraft landed in the United Emirates. It appears that peacekeepers are there. And they're negotiating our treaties. And I'm watching this in my hotel room going, what? We're broke. They're full of crap. They make it up. I mean, it was, it's incredible. Listen to this. Sorry. So it says, test. Test everything that's said. Hold on to what's good. Throw away what's bad. Hold on to what's good. Take the good out from it. Okay? Stay away from every kind of evil. Did you know evil's bad for you? Did you know that? Yet we play with it. We play with it, kind of like fire. You know, we take fire, and any pyromaniac boys in here? Yeah, Michael's back there. I, I burned a house down today. No, the boys are especially bad with this, man. We, we were pyros, man, and... and we think it's so cool to have fire. Uh, you know, you're burning up stuff. And, and fire is nice and can be used for multiple things when it's contained. But when it gets outside the rocks, Better. yeah, <laughs> right? Better. When it gets outside the rocks, you can't control it anymore. And you get wildfires in California. And stay away from every kind of evil. Check it before you bring it in the house. Only let the good stuff in. Turn off the television. It ain't helping you. Okay, if you're watching a program, I just said program. I'm old. I'm not that old. I'm only 47. Okay. You're watching a show. And I'm watching my program this evening. Sorry. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry. You know, but you're watching a show, okay, but the news comes on. Flip it off, man. You know, those those advertisements come on that you don't need to see me, turn it off. It ain't helping you. Alright? When I was young, way back when, uh, when someone would take stuff out of someone else's garbage, we called it dumpster diving. Anybody dumpster dive? We, we're your mom's friends. You're mom's friends. Okay? I love dumpster diving, man. You can find some cool stuff once in a while. I found a motorcycle, literally, well, 
It was a little scooter. I brought it home, my dad's like, no. I'm like, what do you mean, no? It's free. No. I didn't get it. Dumpster diving. Anyway, it's one thing if you go out and you find a broken mo uh, bicycle in the garbage, and then you bring it home and you fix it to where you can ride it. It's useful, right? Or maybe you find an old table that someone threw away, and you refurbish it, and then you put it in your house. That's kind of nice, right? But when it comes to emotional garbage, for some reason, we don't bring home the good stuff that's useful. We don't. We bring home things that harm us. Often, when we go dumpster diving in the world, we bring home the judgment we get from other people. We bring home bad experiences. We bring home the hurts that they have that they dump on us. And we bring them into our home. We're only hurting ourselves. We're dragging that garbage in and we're throwing it on the kitchen table and we're picking through it. Why? It's a choice. We don't have to do that. That's not what God wants for us. If we allow it, their sin or their anger or the pain that they have can be transferred to us when we interact with them. You ever walk, you, you're in a great, great day, everything's going well, you walk up to someone and you're like, how you doing? And they're like, I'm here. Yeah, I love you too, bro. Good on you, right? I mean, they're just, they're dying to bring you down with them. Don't let it happen, man. Don't let other people affect how you think. They control you if you allow them to. Did you know that? And then we take that emotional garbage when we experience it and we share it with people we love. Why? It's a choice. The reason I tell you this stuff is because I have an idea that I think is revolutionary. I think it'll help us all live happier, godlier lives. You ready? I feel like that guy, the, the OxyClean guy, right? Are you ready? <laughs> right? Let's see what happens when you put blood in this. No, kidding. Before I share that idea, I want you to hear this passage from Philippians. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Listen to what? Don't worry about anything. Anybody in here a worrier? <laughs> Bunch of liars? Three people raise their hand. All of us, we don't worry. All right, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank Him for all He's done. Then you will experience God's peace. Folks, the past four weeks have been rough, but I have experienced God's peace. Which is seeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Listen to this. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent, and worthy of praise. It's a choice. Paul is telling us that we don't have to live miserable lives. We can live happy, peaceful lives. Don't worry about anything. Give it to God. He's got it. Did you know that God can do anything? Yeah. What are we worried about? If God is for us, who can be against us? Pray and let go of our worries. That's hard for us. We carry our worries around with us. How are you worried? What are you worried about? Everything. Right? Paul's telling us, let it go, man. Let that stuff go. Let it go. Okay. Allow the peace of God to wash over you. Stop worrying about stuff that doesn't matter. Look, if it's not going to matter in a week, then what are you worried about? But then in verse 8, he says, give us, he's given us some really good advice about avoiding the garbage. He said, only consume things that are true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. That eliminates 99% of news stories. It eliminates 85% of all of their television and 95% of the internet. There's only a little bit that's good for us, for real. We get a lot of time back, too. It's a beautiful thing. If we're only focusing on things that are good for us, 
I promise you our lives will be different. If we're focusing on these things, and we're not inundating ourselves with negative content, destructive thoughts, and harmful feelings, we are choosing to avoid the things that are damaging us. It's a choice. But I can handle it. Thank you. How's that working for you? Everybody thinks they can handle it. It's what the alcoholic says, right? It's what the drug user says. One more, I can handle it. Yeah, go for it, see what happens. You know what though? As I thought about this idea, I realized that no matter how hard we try, we're never gonna avoid garbage entirely. Agreed? So listen, unless we go to a desert island in the middle of the ocean, next slide, we are going to continue to experience some of these things. Unless we're living on a desert island, we can't escape the negativity. I hear volleyballs are pretty negative though. So stay away from volleyballs. If you haven't watched Castaway, then you don't get that joke. Anyway, if we really wanted to, we could avoid, we could choose to avoid the negative news stories. We could turn off the TV when we need to, and if we're careful, we could avoid negative garbage on the internet. If we work at it, we can keep the junk to a minimum. And if we really want to live happier, more stress-free lives, we would do well to eliminate these sources of garbage, all right? But you're not going to eliminate it entirely because people carry their garbage around with them. And they want to give it to you, okay? I call them cave people, citizens against virtually everything. How are you? I'm horrible. Everything's horrible. Woe is me. Anybody remember Eeyore? Yeah. Avoid the Eeyores. All right? I can tell you, I don't even watch the news at all. I haven't watched it for years. If there's something that I need to know, I'm going to find out. Somebody's dying to tell me, I guarantee you. Okay? There's very little TV I watch. I've recently started reading more spending less time in front of the computer screen, and only after a few weeks I can see and feel the difference. But if we're honest with ourselves, our humanity is still going to creep in somewhere, right? I mean, truthfully. We're still going to have some self-generating garbage. After all, we're sinful creatures. All right? So here's my idea. You ready? Yes. Now, are you ready? Yeah. All right, good. Thank you. Makes me feel good. All right, so... As I told you earlier in the lesson, I take out my garbage on Mondays and Thursdays, right? We get up in the morning, drive the garbage out to the curb. Now here's what I've started doing. I think about what garbage I've allowed through the door on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And whatever I can think of that occurred in those days, whatever emotional, sinful, damaging garbage I have, I'm going to take it out with the physical garbage. When I drag my garbage to the curb, I'm going to take all that other garbage and I'm going to give it over. And it's a choice. And if you fail, so what? You can't do anything about it. Move on. Right? Take the garbage out with the garbage. It's a very... <laughs> Serious statement right there. You know, take the garbage out with the garbage. But seriously, take the emotional garbage out. Take the take the, the hurts and the worry and the anger and the frustration and everything out. Take it out with the garbage and leave it there. Don't go get it. But here's the problem. We go back and get it. You really want this. Right? Anybody? I really want this. I have to worry about this. No, you don't. Whatever garbage I produce on Mondays, Tuesday and Wednesdays, I'm gonna take that garbage out Thursday morning with the rest of the trash. That's all there is to it. And I'm not bringing it back in the house. So I'm either gonna let whatever I'm dwelling on go, I'm gonna make it a point to apologize to people for the way I've wronged them, or I'm gonna ask God for forgiveness of the sins I've committed on those times. When I take out the garbage, I'm gonna take out the garbage, amen? Isn't that a good idea? Yeah. You can do it too. Let's all do it together. 
together. Let's get it to the garbage bin. Right? Psalm 23, 5 says this. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. I got news for you. God knows anyway. We're like, he's not going to know. <laughs> You're only fooling yourself, bro. God knows. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. And you forgave me. And listen to this. All my guilt is gone. Isn't that a good feeling? If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We can be made new every time we do it. But it's a choice. I figured this was an easy way to remember that I need to take out the emotional and spiritual trash for the rest of the trash. Otherwise, as I said earlier, we allow it to pile up. We allow it to pile up all around us. And even though it smells and it's gross, we're so used to it being there, we're so used to stepping in it every time we move that we don't even realize it's there. You guys know what I'm talking about? We don't even realize it. We get so used to it being there. But we don't have to live like this. God doesn't want us to live like this. So why should we want to live differently than what God wants us to live? How God wants us to live. I was just testing you guys. Good job. So listen. We got one more thing to do before we leave tonight. I don't know what kind of garbage each one of you are dealing with. I've got my garbage. You've got your garbage. But we don't have to carry it around with us. Jesus will take our garbage. Cast all your burdens on me. Cast all your burdens on me. He wants us to give it to him. He doesn't want us to be burdened down with all of that. But we, we carry this stuff everywhere we go. And I got some other news for you, too. We think people don't know this. I'm going to tell you right now, they know this. You can't have a couch on your back Walk into Walmart and expect that people aren't going to notice. That's what it is. Might as well be. I mean, you see people walking around, right? They're like this. You're like, bro, are you okay? I'm fine. Yeah, you're fine. Liar. Right? We carry it around everywhere. And we give it to other people. Why? We're just looking for a reason to take it out on somebody. Cut me off, I dare you. Right? I dare you. Come on, punk. I just sound like when you when you that. No. Jesus wants us to give it to him. He doesn't want us to live lives full of burden. But in order to do that, you have to make him your Lord and Savior. The question is, have you done that? You don't go to heaven because you're a good person. You don't go to heaven because your father was a deacon or your grandpa used to be a preacher, that doesn't work. The only way, according to this book, not me, that you go to heaven is to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Romans 3.23 says, For everyone is sinned and falls short of the glory of God. Do you know you're a sinner? You know that? I know that. No doubt in my mind. Right? Everybody's a sinner. Here's the thing. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. And listen, it's not talking about physical death. It's talking about when death came into the world, okay? That happened at the fall, Adam and Eve, right? When they disobeyed God. That's when death came into the world. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Love these verses. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's by believing in your heart that you're made right with God and by openly declaring your faith that you're saved. Probably one of my favorite verses in the Bible is Romans 10, 13. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The question is, have you done that? You want your burdens gone? Confess Christ. I tell you what, man. If you'd have told me 25 years ago that I'd be a preacher, I have told you that there's a psychiatric war with your name on it. 
okay? I would have said, listen, they got good medication, they're good doctors, they can help you. But here I am. Here I am preaching. God can change us. He can take away our burdens. Even in the midst of your hardest trials. Folks, I've been going through some trials, but you know what? God is good. And he's faithful. And he's got something better for me. I don't know what it is. I'm excited to find out. Right? I got a new motorcycle, I can tell you that. Right? And it's pretty. Oh, yeah. But if you've never confessed Christ is your Lord and Savior, that's what you need to do first and foremost. If you've done that, if you've confessed Christ, you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, then here's the question I have for you tonight. Are you letting go of your burdens? Are you getting rid of your garbage? Are you taking your spiritual, your emotional, your hurts, your pain, and are you giving it to God or are you holding on to it? We hold on to it for security. Did you know that? We hold on to it because it gives us some level of control. It's okay to let it go. It's okay to let it go. Because if we don't, we're held captive by that. Did you know that? You're being controlled by whatever it is you're worried about. And you don't have to live that way. It's a choice. It's not easy, I know. But it's a burden you're not meant to carry and you can't. Hate to tell you. So if you're a believer, I pray that with me, we start taking the garbage out. We start giving it to Jesus. We start living lives of peace. Amen? If you've never confessed Christ, I'll be here afterward. Happy to talk to you. Tell you everything you want to know. I'll try to. If I don't, I'll make something up. It'll be pretty good. Okay? But folks, I want you to find what I found. I want you to experience what I've experienced. Because Jesus is real. And it's awesome. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We praise you. I thank you so much for everybody here tonight. I praise you for each one of them, for their hearts, for the love for you. Lord, I pray that you would just take away our burdens. Help us to give it to you. Help us to just hand them over voluntarily. Stop holding on to the things that hurt us. Lord, help us to listen to that still small voice that you give us. Help us to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Help us to just push the garbage out of our houses and our homes. Lord, help us to focus on you and you alone. We love and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad you guys came out tonight. Jim, you going to play a song? He said he was going to play a song, didn't he? Yeah, well, I'm all right. All right. You tired Here we go. Jason.
Tomorrow morning, if anybody's out doing it, 10 o'clock. Come on out. Love you guys.